Okay, we got Violet and the Pie of Life. Chapter 16. How I spent my morning. Usual things. I checked my email as soon as I woke up. Nothing from Dad. When I rushed into the kitchen for my toast and peanut butter breakfast, Mom, peanut butter breakfast, Mom was sitting at the kitchen table, dressed and dry-eyed and clutching a large mug of coffee. As I got out of the car, Mom told me to have a nice day. Rare things. I got ready for school quickly without Mom nagging me once. We left for school almost 15 minutes early, and I thanked Mom for driving me. As soon as I got to school, I went right to Allie's locker. Actually, I stood about five feet away at a 45-degree angle, so I wouldn't seem like a weird stalker, even though I was. When Allie came by, I said, oh, hey, in a fake cheerleader, cheerleader voice, unfortunately, like my mom's. I got your text, Allie said, like someone would say, I got dog poop on my shoe. I'm sorry, I said, which was dumb since I already texted her for those two words, or three words if you include if I'm counted as two words. And she just told me she got me te my text. Allie wrinkled her nose as she could smell the dog poop. You texted me at like three in the morning. I sighed. I couldn't even apologize right. Oh, right. I hope the text didn't wake you. She walked right by me and faced her locker. I didn't see it till I was eating breakfast. Phew, because, you know, I'd already apologized two times the text and just now. Allie didn't say anything, maybe because she was concentrating on twisting her combo lock. Not concentrating hard enough, though, because her locker didn't open. She spun the lock around and tried again. This time, the locker opened. I moved closer to her and said, but I would have to apologize a third time if I had woken you up. She took out Treasure Island and dropped it into her backpack. The thud sound struck out in the silence. Because waking you up would have been a different thing to apologize for. She dug through her backpack and put some notebooks in her locker. A whole separate apology, I went on. I wasn't used to the silent treatment. Mackenzie was never silent. Neither were my parents. Well, Dad had gone silent. Allie closed her locker, spun the lock, and walked away without saying a word. I sort of understood why my silence drives my mom up the wall. If I'd had a pen and paper handy and 15 minutes to focus, I could have made a flowchart of my options. One, shout, at Ali was a, shout that Ali was a jerk for not accepting two apologies plus the offer of the third. Two, give third apology. Three, think of something else to do. But I didn't have a pen or paper or any time to focus, so I followed my instincts and ran down the hallway to catch up with Ali. The Shin twins were walking toward us. They said, hey, Allie, at the same time. Nick Shin voice had turned manly over the summer. Nate Shin's voice was still squeaky. Even though I had classes with both of them, neither of them acknowledged me. As Allie waved to them, I told her, I texted you in the middle of the night because I couldn't sleep. Allie didn't stop walking or slow down or even look at me. But she said, why couldn't she sleep? I was so grateful for those four words, or five if you count couldn't, as two words. They weren't as good let's be friends again, or I accept apology, or you're a nice person, but they're a lot better than silence. I couldn't sleep because I felt bad about being a jerk at rehearsal, I said. I'm such a total idiot. Allie slowed down. You're not a total idiot. I am at least a partial idiot and a total jerk. Partial joke jerk, she said, and stopped walking. I'm really, really sorry. I was begging, but Allie deserved it after how I treated her. She looked at me right in my eyes and said, okay, I forgive you. Are you saying that so I'll shut up? Definitely, she laughed. No, really, I forgive you. Do you want to see a movie Saturday night? I'm going with some other girls from the play. I pictured myself huddling in the snack bar line with Allie and Shasha and Kimney. The other girls would forgive me after seeing Allie had. I could tell my joke about popcorn being healthy because corn is a vegetable, which Mackenzie always laughed at. Hey, Trippy. 
Then I remembered I'd had plans with Mackenzie. Thanks a lot, I told Allie, but I have someone coming over Saturday. Does she want to come to the movies too? I shook my head. She doesn't like the movies. Total lie. But yeah, thanks. Sorry. I switched to a silly sing-song voice. Sorry, sorry, sorry. We both laughed. Sometime, something made me look down the hallway. Mackenzie was walking towards us. I quit laughing. She glared at Allie and then turned and walked away. Is that who's coming over Saturday night? Allie asked. I stared at Mackenzie's stiff back and her two short jeans and nodded. I know she doesn't like me, Allie said. She likes you, I said, another total lie, and kept staring down the hallway even though Mackenzie was gone. Time for class. We walked to Allie's classroom. Let me know if you change your mind about the movie, she said before going inside. I stood at the door for a moment, thinking that a month ago I would have seemed ridiculous for Allie and me to become friends. Now we're just now we weren't just becoming friends, we were friends. I headed for my class and tried to figure out an explanation for Mackenzie. I hope I wouldn't see her before lunch. Of course, she was waiting for me in front of my classroom, and she said with a scowl, For someone who texted me yesterday that you hated Allie, you sure seemed to like her. Allie didn't do anything wrong, I said. I was taking out my problems on her. I still don't know where my dad is, and I heard my mom crying, and so you and Allie are BFFs now or something? That's best friends forever, by the way, and I know that. You're my BFF, I said. Mackenzie lost her scowl. She nodded. Maybe things would blow over. They could have blown over if Mackenzie hadn't interrupted me when I was talking about my parents or if I hadn't let the interruption bother me, but those things happened. You know what I said? Allie's nice once you get to know her. I don't want to get to know her. I barely get to see you anymore with all your rehearsals. Yeah, I'm glad we're getting together Saturday night. Not a total lie, but sort of one. Let's go to the movies, Mackenzie said. I pictured us running to Allie and the other girls at the theater. Allie would ask us to sit with her and Mackenzie would scowl again, and I wouldn't know what to do. So I said, can you just come over? You're always telling me what to do these days, Mackenzie said. Sorry. If Allie heard me apologize, she probably would have told me to stop. But Mackenzie didn't. She kept talking. Just a minute, Trippies. Your mom, uh, ask your mom to pick me up, okay? What? It, it's almost, okay, fine. All right. Uh... If Allie had heard me apology, she probably would have told me to stop. But Mackenzie didn't. She kept talking. Ask your mom to pick me up, okay? She didn't wait for my okay back. She'll be so thrilled to hurl questions at us. I felt my face tighten. It was different for me to complain about my mom than for Mackenzie to do it, or anyone, really. I didn't like it when Dad did it either. My mom's not a free-range kid's mom, I said, but... She's not bad. Mackenzie nodded. Yeah, your mom is kind of great. Text from Allie. Seeing Love Sucks at Valley Theater tomorrow at 7.30. Are you sure you can't come? Violet. Sorry again. Smiley face. Can't. Frowny face. And we're going to stop here for tonight because Trippy's being fussy, fussy, fussy. <laughs>